Okay guys, hopefully the mosquito noises aren't too crazy. I'll try to keep them away from the camera as much as possible. But today we are going to be talking about the Ontario RTAC 2. And we're gonna be giving you or I'm gonna be giving you guys an overview and talking about why I chose the RTAC 2 over the Hungless or the Hungless 2. Okay, so this is the Ontario RTAC 2, as you guys can see there, and this is a pretty hefty, pretty big blade, though I'm not going to lie. It is not as heavy as I was initially expecting it to be, which is definitely probably a good thing. I was expecting this to be a absolute monster, and while it definitely is in size, it definitely does not feel too hefty. And of course, like most people that get our tattoos or even hooglesses, uh, I also got a custom sheath for it, and this was made by, if I remember correctly, RK Custom Kydex, and I just got this one because uh, I like the theme of it. It is a blue carbon Kydex, and uh, it was reasonably affordable. And then I just wrapped it with some paracord, obviously put a little paracord lanyard on it, and threw my own uh, fire steel on there just to make it kind of uh, survival worthy because this is, of course, a large survival knife. So what's a large survival knife without some paracord and a fire steel, right? So that's kind of the overview of this blade, and now I'm going to talk about why I chose the RTAC 2 over something more, something more conventional like a Hungless or a Hungless 2. So the reason why I didn't go with the Hungless 2 is just because it was a little bit too small when I was thinking about the Hungless versus the RTAC 2. I was like, might as well go all the way and get the the serious 10 inch, 10 and a half inch bladed option for a serious woods survival blade. So this isn't quite what I normally choose for size and probably a little bit surprising for some people, but I've actually wanted the RTAC uh, for quite some time and so I was like, might as well go for it and get a awesome kind of chopping survival batoning blade and test it out and you know have some variety on the channel so that's kind of why i chose the larger survival blade but the primary reason why i chose the artac over the hungless is not uh, a lot of people say you know the price point and i wasn't particularly concerned about the price point really being a and I wasn't really concerned about the price point between the two, though it is about a solid $70 to $60 difference, and sometimes even more, because I got this RTAC 2 for $75, bucks, whereas, you know, a Hoogless is around $169, so... You know, I nearly got it about $100 off, but the price point wasn't the biggest thing for me. It really came back to the blade steel. Now, I have no problems with SE's Rowan Heat Treated 1095. It is a pretty solid option, and it is a pretty good choice for a blade steel. But when it came down to it, 5160 is one of my favorite steels. I've talked about that quite a bit on this channel, even made videos discussing my favorite bushcrafting and survival knife steels, and 5160 is easily in the top three. So while I do like 1095 and I think SE does a good job with the Hoogless and the Hoogless 2, I have to say that the 5160 for me is what does it every time. And so the ultimate leading factor for me to choose the RTAC 2 was the blade steel. Now, like I said, the price point certainly does help. You know, being about $100 off was not something that I was complaining about, but at the same time, um, like I said, I really like 5160 a lot more than 1095, and I think that 5160 being a spring steel, uh, you know, there are some people that are very opposed to the idea of batoning, but especially when you have a larger blade like this, batoning is certainly something that is right up this blade's wheelhouse. So I wanted to choose 5160 because 5160 is a spring steel. It's a little bit more resilient or has some bounce back to it when you are batoning and when you're actually putting some shock on the actual steel. And especially considering that this blade, just like the Hoogless, is a full flat grind and the fact that, you know, it may start out fairly thick, but it definitely narrows down towards the tip. I wanted a steel that had a bit of spring to it. 
and I know 5160. I have several knives in the blade steel of 5160, so I can trust the steel to have that bounce back, even when it comes down to a very fine point like this, albeit this might not be the finest point, but, you know, my buck thug has an even finer point than this, and um, it does a very good job. The Thug is another one that I have put through its paces, batoned the absolute life out of, and it just comes back for more and more. So, so that is why I was led to choose the Artac 2, and hopefully you guys uh, will enjoy seeing this blade getting used a little bit more than just this. This was just kind of an initial overview and test, you know, I just get excited and want to start uh, using the blades. So that's the primary driving force to why I just uh, chose to go for it but yeah so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video this overview and this breakdown of the RTAC 2 and sheath so hopefully you guys so as always guys god bless and I'm out